Good afternoon. It's Michael Lipinski again. Continuing on with the rather architectural tutorial. We've made it all the way to chapter 18. Documenting your design. Now, this is important. Least common denominator, foot inch fractions. Decimal feet. Units, units. Very, very difficult to add, subtract, put in fractions quickly in the field. Now, many, many architects, many, many formats, many people can form that function extremely quick. Over the course of time, as you measure, you will be able to subtract foot in fractions, uh, add foot in fractions, divide foot in fractions, multiply foot in fractions, decimal feet. Now, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. But it has more to do with speed. Some folks can make those calculations like that. Others may need a calculator. Now, architecture is a study of space and how much time we have. Now, you may, like myself, sometimes experience a little bit of lag uh, in that particular area. But fret not. There's uh, always room for growth in practice. And like anything else, if, if, you, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So a footage fraction calculator is always good to have. It always is. Utilizing um, fractions of an inch is what is going to be required in order for you to communicate effectively. So are you going to stand behind your design? You have to be able to stand behind your design and you not know, have it just crumpled up and thrown like garbage. Is it going to fit? Is it going to be able to coexist in, in, in these, these envelopes, in these, uh, these planned spaces that uh, are required in these uh, infrastructure projects? So I just wanted to bring that up because if it's your intent, to get out of the office and, and work in the field, you know, you may have to go out and, and measure a little bit. Now, uh, I just wanted to, to point that out. So let me get this out of the way. But it's very important. It's very important. So let's, let's begin this chapter 18 documenting your design because uh, it's going to return an aesthetically pleasing uh, document and you're going to be proud of it. You're going to be proud of it. I've always rushed to get it on a title block just to make it look just so uh, perfectly symmetrical and organized. It, it's, it was always the goal. It, it gives you a certain sense of satisfaction when you get to the, to the sheet. After all the effort you put in the design, to get that on the sheet and get it to look perfect when you print it, it looks good. But getting it there is so difficult. And then when it's there, printing it and getting it to the way you want uh, could be an arduous task. Uh, line weights, colors, fill patterns, and all those things that play into it. The drawing can't be too busy. The drawing can't be too busy. Uh, there are uh, AIA guidelines. There are... There are architectural graphic standards that we try to apply. And plotting and publishing is a whole other science. And depending on how you convey these documents is going to uh, dictate how you approach them. And I've gone through so many shops, with so many plotters and so many print drivers and so many folks having so many uh, settings that they use to achieve that. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, but once you get it, you tend to kind of hold on to it and keep it as a standardized uh, method within your uh, workflow at your organization. So documenting your design. While the industry continues to move toward a 3D building information model as a construction deliverable, 
Today, we still need to produce 2D documents for construction document set or design reviews. Using the integrated documentation tools in Autodesk Revit software, you can create these sets with more accuracy and reliability than in the past. In this chapter, you will take the elements you have previously modeled and detailed and begin to create documentation for your design. In this chapter, you'll learn to document plans, create schedules and legends, lay out sheets, documenting plans. In this chapter, we'll introduce a scenario that will mimic what might happen on a real project in a preliminary design phase. We're going to assume you'll be using the C18 sample building start of the metric equivalent, which I have open on the screen. Here's the story. Have you recently, you, you have recently completed some preliminary, preliminary design work in advance of upcoming client meeting. You'll need to lay out the plans, elevations, and perspectives on some presentation sheets for the meeting. But you'll also have to include some building metrics such as area plans and schedules and of overall spaces. In the following sections, you'll set up those views and sheets, starting with the area plans. For the purpose of program verification, you have decided you need to establish the spatial areas for the building so the, so the client can get some preliminary pricing from the contractor. Before you create your area plans, we'll discuss some of the various ways you can calculate areas and revenue. Calculating space using room objects. The simplest way to calculate the space in a building design is to use room objects. Room tags can be used to report room name, department, area, and any other properties of a room. These properties can also be scheduled to report the total area of all rooms within a design. With rooms, however, the areas that they report are limited to how those spaces are defined. With the C18 sample building star RVT or its metric equivalent model open, choose the architecture tab, then access the expanded panel under the room and area panel. Let's go to level one, architectural tab. Room and area, expand the entire panel. Now, let me just sit up, we'll move this terminal a little closer here. A little more space. Okay, so as you can see from the toolbar, we have a lot of tools in this panel. It's a very powerful panel. And we can go through all of these, and we will. Let's follow along with the text, because anyone who's been following along knows that uh, when I get going, I sometimes can deviate from center. Now, click area and volume computations. Now let's read the tooltip first. Specifies how areas and volumes are calculated and creates area schemes. Volumes are computed at finish faces. For room areas, you can specify whether they're computed using the wall finish, wall center, wall core layer, or wall core center. Click area and volume computations, which opens the area and volume computations dialog box. The choices are as follows. At wall finish, at wall center, at wall core layer, at wall core center. Because each of these settings affects the entire project, a level of consistency is ensured for room calculations. However, the global nature of the setting makes it difficult to use the room objects for gross area calculations. Room calculations can give you an accurate net area or carpet area. 
That refers to the area between the finished wall surfaces considered as occupied space. This value can also be reported in the room tag or in a schedule, key, uh, schedule by selecting the first choice under the room area computation settings. At wall finish in the area involving computations dialog box, select this option and click OK. Please note that should you instead choose the areas and volumes option, whether it will also calculate the room volume, which will impact performance for larger project files. And that's going to be very, very important. Airflow, illumination. On a side note, if you're following along with current events, there are going to be changes to the Uniform Building Code, and New York has already let everyone know that there will be some very, very enhanced environmental restrictions and regulations placed on these systems for biological pathogen transmission purposes. They're going to try, they're going to in, insist that you have the air sterilized within these new uniform building code regulations. Now manufacturers are chomping at the bit and everyone's chomping at the bit. This is this is going to be a good thing. It's going to create jobs. It's going to further enhance the green building paradigm and it's going to return a dividends down the road for everyone uh, for for the entire community now let's see how this looks in the floor plans activate the level two floor plan In this view, we have already established the rooms and added room tags. However, the tags do not show the room areas. To modify the setting, follow these steps. Select any of the room tags. And from the properties palette, choose edit type. In the type properties dialog box, Select the Show Area checkbox. These are parameters that built into the tag, labels, if you will, built into the tag. Click OK to edit the dialog box. Now, please do not think that this is rudimentary. There are There is a lot of data that you can extract from uh, walls uh, or rooms that are bound by walls and ceilings. Uh, and bound by other elements. There is a lot of information you can extract from bounded rooms. These are rudimentary, and I'm, I'm aware of that. But you'll see. Chemical scrubbers, sniffers, all of these things are going to play into this. If we start talking on the industrial side, as opposed to just residential or commercial or retail. So looking at the residential aspect of it where the MVPs can play a little more of a part, you're going to start to see that these spaces will, uh, will become a bit more, a bit more um, scientific. Click OK to exit the dialog box. OK, so as you can see, the men's room changed to 119 square feet, as did most of the other rooms that do indeed have that tag associated with it. We changed all the tags. And now that tag, family, has changed throughout the project. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. You have to remember when you change that, um, because you, you're, you're gonna have, it's going to have an impact on all the tags. 
Okay. This is a certification objective. Now you should see the areas reflected in the room tags as shown on the screen. This is because the show area setting was created as a yes no type parameter assigned to the visibility property of the area label within the room tag family. If you want to explore this functionality further, you can open the tag family, select the room tag, and click Edit Family in the contextual tab of the ribbon, or we can create a new tag. So I'm going to do it real quick. I know it doesn't say it in the text, but there's absolutely no reason why we can't go to File. And this is something that I haven't showed you. New. Now, look at the bottom. Annotation symbol. New project, new family, new conceptual mass, new title block, which we haven't discussed, and new annotation symbol. Creates a tag or symbol to identify elements in the project. So let's just open that up. And you'll see it will default to the library right down to the uh, family templates English uh, annotations. And as you see, there's a, there's a bunch loaded. You can create any, anyone you want. And uh, I spent many years, many years, uh, with the uh, Lower Academy P, top bottom elevation or conduit. And those, the tag and um, annotation aspect of AutoCAD uh, is uh, robust as well. But you're going to have to uh, put in a lot of effort on the AutoCAD. And most of the engineers and design folks I met, as a matter of fact, every single one of them up until July 7th, 2021, that I met in uh, IBW Local 3, uh, do it manually. They measure the height of the conduit run, and they manually put in text, and they... Uh, assign the elevation to the underside of the conduit and the uh, during coordination when they're moving their model around they're incapable of simultaneously having that update on their documentation I learned I learned why it's not a good idea from Lear McGovern Bovis, Bovis when I was working at the World Trade Center that's not sufficient that's not a, it's not going to work for you it's going to get you sent down the road if you continue to document your conduits manually by measuring their elevation from the, from the floor. You're going to have a very, very difficult time in this industry. That's uh, free. That tip is free. That tip is free. Uh, and uh, I never, ever should have let them know. It came back to haunt me. I'm such a giver. Now, this is a certification objective. If you select any of the room tags, you can also see the area that's calculating displayed with a red outline. We'll get to that. We're going to use a, uh, a template file. Now, I just want to use... Um, let's see here. Which one do I want to use? Well, I'm in a... Uh, Architectural template, so I'm going to use a uh, room tag. So it's saying is you can go into the tag that we have in the family in the project and then edit it there. But I'm not. If we look at this family, the toolbars are a little different than the toolbar that becomes uh, part of the user interface when you create a new family, as well as when you create a, a new mass, and as well as when you create a new tile block. The ribbon is different. There are different tools on it. There are some similar tools, but there are some new ones. Um, and then so there's some that aren't there. So right off the bat, you can see there's a label. T text tag creates a label for the annotation symbol. The label can contain text that does not change, or it can be based on a parameter. So its value can change for each family type or instance. So if I click label, and you'll get this little uh, symbol right by your arrow. Click to place label, so I'll just place it right there. The edit label dialog box will open up. And being that it's a room, so we use the room template, you'll see there's a list of parameters. And there's also a dialog, uh, 
a tool to create a new parameter. But before we go any further, we'll just go with what we have here. We got area, we have base finish, ceiling finish, comments, department floor finish, uh, industry foundation class, graphical user ID, level, name, number, occupancy, perimeter, unbounded height, volume, wall finish. And if you're interested, you can indeed um, search for shared parameters. We haven't even gotten to yet. Um, these export to uh, databases and the PM schedules and tags, but the shared parameter file, which um, it's looking for, is uh, doesn't exist. So if you were to go and look for it, you would have to browse, and you'll notice that it's a TXT file. It's a TXT file common delineated file. So you can find them, but we're not going to go off on a tangent just yet. Let's just stick to the guns. Let's throw in perimeter. And let's throw in, a, it already has volume. Let's throw in a level. And that's it for now. Now, wrap parameters only. Between parameters, you don't, they're going to remain on the same line. Spaces, you can prefix them, right? You can prefix them. This is the sample value that it's going to return. So I hit apply. You'll see that they're both there. So now there's nothing saying that you can't center these as close as you can to the reference planes. And if you drag this box, you'll get them, and you use your nudge, you'll get your nudge. Load into project and close. It's going to ask us to save it. Load it into what project? Sample building start or the title block that I forgot to close. I'm going to load it into the sample building start. Now, if perimeter is, um, I'm just going to save this um, up my uh, drop box. Okay, so um, let me just hold on a second. Let me close this title wall. All right, now, when we go to uh, annotate, uh, I'm in the wrong the level. If this works, I'll be happy. So now, if I went to annotate, tag by category, I can look at the tags here in the contextual toolbar. When it opens up, you'll see tags. family that I loaded in. There's no tank loaded for floors. Do you want to load one out? No, it's because it's not what I wanted. I wanted to select the rooms. Let me see if I can get the, the rooms. Did I do it right? I do it wrong. Anything. Hold on. That's the floor. Hold on. Making a liar out of me. All right, I'll do it another way. Hold on. Let's just create a, uh, a wall this way. Give me a second. Create a floor. Let me create a room.
Yeah, no, it's gonna make a liar out of me. It's gonna make a liar out of me. Give me a second. I don't see the room battling box opening up. And that could very well be the case. Give me a second. I'm going for visibility graphics. Video. Visibility graphics. Annotation categories. Let me see if I can find this. See the little bounding box. Can't select them. Rooms. Okay, let's see if I can do it now. Hold on. Annotate. Tag by category. Select the object to tag. I can't get it now. I don't want to take the floor. Is it that's already tagged? It must be that's already tagged. It's probably one I'm not able to do it. So let me just swap out this tag. Let's do it this way. All right, so as a perimeter, 53 feet, 3 and 15, 30 seconds. And it's level 1. All right, so that's basically why I couldn't, because I already had a tag. But then again, it is what it is. So you can see, we can create any type of tag you want. And this one just so happens to be a masking tag. It's masking what's below it. Um, you could add a leader line to it, right? Drag it out. If you wanted to uh, do for something fancy schmancy. In any event, let's just uh, go back. All right, so. Now, if you select any one of the room tags, you can also see the area that is, that is calculating displayed with the red outline. When adding rooms, you are not limited to only rooms that are bound on all sides with walls. If you know the lounge and lobby spaces on level one, hold on, if you know and you really should know, if you know the lounge and lobby spaces on um, level one shown, there isn't a wall dividing the two rooms yet, they're shown as being independent of each other, right? So at the lounge and lobby, there's no wall here. But they're shown as two separate areas with two separate square footage calculations and two tags, room, uh, room named, room naming tags. <clears throat> this, this separation is achieved by using U, uh, U, uh, room separation lines which can be placed with the room separator tool located on the room and area panel of the architecture tab. The room separator creates a separation line to bound rooms where no walls or other room bounding elements exist. Open a floor plan view to place a separation line. If the space already contains a room, the room boundaries adjust to the new separation lines. If the space does not yet contain a room, you can create one. So as you can see, just by looking at that dialog, that tooltip dialog box, room one and room two, or A and B, is being separated into two, um, or it's one room being separated uh, technically into two rooms. Now, why would that be? There's a whole host of reasons why you would do that. Let's just say you're a building operator or a building owner or uh, you're, a, you're a corporation that has tangible assets in your office that consist of a computer, a mouse, uh, category seven, uh, ethernet cable, and a desk, a chair, and a lamp, and a telephone, and an employee 
that sits at that desk, this is how you're going to be able to manage your equipment and your assets. You'll be able to associate a whole host of uh, metadata into it. Now, note that these lines will print and export with other model, model and annotation elements, but you can adjust their visibility in the visibility graphic overrides dialog box. If you decide to change the vis visibility of the room separator lines and turn them off within a view, they will continue to divide the room objects. You will find these elements in the visibility graphic dialog box on the model elements tab of the lines room separation. Because area calculations using rooms don't usually include wall thicknesses. Let's look at another way to calculate areas. So what it's saying is that if we go to view, visibility graphics, uh, under lines, you will see, I believe that's a room separator. Just give me a second. Okay, so there's the room separator line. Again, you turn it on and off and you override the color. And there's no projection or any of that with it as would be another element. So then, let's just reiterate what it said. Because area calculations using rooms don't usually include wall thicknesses, let's look at another way to calculate areas using area plans. Working with rooms and areas, rooms and areas are the two object types you will use to annotate and report the occupied space within your building designs. You can use room tags and area tags to visualize data such as room name or number, but the tags merely report the data that exists in the object itself. So, how do you work with objects that have no solid geometry? Both rooms and areas have a reference that can be seen if you hover the mouse pointer with a space. Sometimes these references can be difficult to find, which I just showed you before the big X. But there is something you can do to improve your efficiency when working with these objects. In the visibility graphics objects over, uh, overrides dialog box, locate areas of rooms in the model categories tabs, expand the category for either object, and you will see interior fill and reference. These subcategories are turned off by default, but you can turn them on if you will be frequently editing these objects. And uh, you can turn them on, and I, I did, but it's annoying sometimes because when you're trying to select something, they always get selected first. And then you want to turn them back off. All right? Are they made selectable? Yeah, see? So what it's saying is, you can go to the visibility graphics here, or here in the view, right? Here. And we go down to areas. You can see here, interior fill, reference. And I already did the rooms, right? So if we apply, all right, now, and they're superimposed. So that was a bin manager note. Let me uh, go to the next page, see uh, what it, where it leads us. Okay, so the next area is, um, it goes into the uh, Building Owners and Managers Association criteria. Um, and creating area plans. Why don't we stop it there so uh, we can digest that and get this uh, burnt to disk. We have a lot to cover, but uh, we're not too far from the end. But uh, this is something that you have to kind of go through over and over and over again because we've covered so much content. Um, how much of that you retain is based on lots of things, which is the same uh, it's synonymous with retainage as a contractor. Uh, they're going to negotiate the change orders at the end of the job, and uh, how much of that percentage of retainage you're able to retain for your firm is going to be dictated by uh, lots of variables. And I just wanted to let you know that one of those variables is coordination. If, uh, if you fail to coordinate the job properly, you may lose the, uh, the line item that's installed, inserted into that retainage um, dollar amount. So try to hang on to as much money as you can in your contracts. Or let them take it and call it up as a loss.